All right, let's get started. Hello everyone, thank you for joining this webinar, which is about how to modernize traditional applications and get cloud ready using Docker Enterprise Edition. Some housekeeping, feel free to type your questions as we move along the presentation. We will try to answer your questions towards the end of the webinar. And if we don't get to respond to all your questions, we will follow up with all of you with a Q&A blog. Please note, we will use legacy, traditional, monolith interchangeably throughout this presentation. A little bit about myself. My name is Dee Kumar. I'm a part of the product marketing team at Docker. I have about 15 years of experience in creating mobile PC and cloud ecosystems spanning across mid-size to Fortune 500 companies, namely Equinix, Lenovo, HP. You, can, you guys can find me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is at dsprinter. And my name is Brandon Royal. I'm a Docker solution architect and a passionate technologist really focused on uh, driving uh, adoption of containers. Uh, in the legacy application space. Um, I actually come from the Microsoft ecosystem, sort of my career as a C-sharp developer, uh, and now focused on solution architecture. Great. Modernize legacy applications with Docker Enterprise Edition. All of us have heard a lot of chatter on microservices, cloud, and trends on artificial intelligence, predictive analytics, big data, but the journey to microservices and cloud begins with containerization. And we will get to how important it is to begin with modernizing traditional applications or legacy applications using Docker Enterprise Edition or Docker containers as a first step leading to microservices architecture and eventually cloud-ready apps. The recent state of the cloud report from RightScale indicates that most enterprises are looking to move their workloads to multiple clouds without vendor lock-in. Enterprise IT leaders would like the flexibility of analyzing workloads and leveraging multiple clouds to host different data sets based on business needs. As an example, they might want to have very sensitive company information on-prem while they might want to have applications that are most used by their customers on public cloud so they can offer agility uh, to their end customers. Long-term goal for most enterprises is digital transformation. We've been hearing this buzzword word for a very long time. What does it exactly mean? Digital means flexibility, thereby allowing organizations to transform at scale. Digital transformation is a whole scale change to the business starting with business operating models all the way down to the infrastructure. Docker is central to the digital transformation strategy, and it all starts with modernizing traditional applications using Docker Enterprise Edition. As most of you know, software is the lifeblood of any organization, whether automating internal processes or creating unique and engaging ways to service your customer. Every company considers themselves a digital or a tech company to some extent. Most organizations are looking at strategies to modernize the applications. What does it mean? Should I rebuild? Should I refactor? Should I re uh, revise? How do I get to the microservices distributed app architectures? And how do I eventually move my applications to the cloud? But getting there isn't always easy because you have legacy applications and environments to take care while you try to do new innovative things. Legacy applications are not meant to be thrown away and can be very useful, but the maintenance of these old applications can be expensive and very time consuming. Some of these old applications were written de decades ago and may have millions of lines of code and require deep knowledge around the old code base and those skill sets may no longer be at your company. Most organizations do not have a clear strategy for retiring legacy applications, and they continue to spend up to three quarters of their IT budgets to just keep the lights on. The average company spends about 60 to 85% of their IT budget maintaining legacy applications that fail to meet the changing competitive needs of the business. 80% of IT budgets are invested towards the upkeep of these legacy applications and hardware required to support these applications. These old 
legacy applications require upgrades for better security and compliance standards. That leaves about 20% of the funds towards innovation, and more or less it becomes an afterthought. But we have a solution for you. Modernize legacy applications without touching the code base using Docker Enterprise Edition. My friend here, Brandon, will talk about Docker Enterprise Edition and how to get started with modernizing legacy applications. You can modernize without having to have intimate knowledge of the code base, nor do you need to plan a giant development effort to modernize legacy applications. This kind of takes you through the overall journey of how do you get started. Step one is to containerize your legacy applications using Docker Enterprise Edition or Docker containers. That gets you to step two, which is all about microservices and distributed app architectures. And step three is where you can actually really start innovating, accelerating new application development and getting these apps to the cloud. Most of our customers are seeing a lot of value and immediate benefits around portability, security, and efficiency. And these customers have been using Docker Enterprise Edition. Now let's talk about what exactly are they seeing from a portability standpoint. With Docker Enterprise Edition or Docker containers allows these customers or businesses to gain control and consistency by enabling right ones run anywhere that can be deployed on premise to any cloud or in a hybrid architecture across, across clouds. You can keep your existing environment, app architectures, operating systems, components, multiple OS versions, and achieve fast, predictable deployments across multiple environments, be it staging or QA or production. And after you modernize your app using Docker Enterprise Edition, and say as an example, you've tested it in your QA environment, the app is definitely going to work in production. That is the beauty of Docker containers. As an example, ADP, they moved their most business critical apps, which was, which was hosted in US, to EMEA in a matter of weeks after failing with VMs for months. For now, they accelerated cloud migration in about two months and disaster recovery from days to 30 minutes. Security, Docker Data Center, which is a part of Docker Enterprise Edition, is a single pane of glass and it provides integrated container management and security from development to production. Docker Data Center, it gives IT teams the ability to scale operations efficiently without breaking the developer experience. Again, Brandon is going to take you through a lot of detail around Docker Data Center, which is a part of Docker Enterprise Edition. In a nutshell, Docker Data Center, it scans the containers, it knows what is running now, and it runs only find images so we know where it came from and, so, and that we can trust it. Lastly, a lot of our customers are also seeing a lot of uh, CapEx and OpEx savings, thereby they're able to achieve operational efficiency. As an example, you can see all these different stats and these stats were primarily put together just based on real customers and the benefits they were seeing after using Docker, Data, Docker Enterprise Edition. As an example, one of our customers, they were able to consolidate and save, consolidate the VM and save 25%. And the way they achieved that is by consolidating their data centers from 92 to 24. Another example was uh, Cornell. They achieved 10x man hours and savings with app maintenance. Cornell again achieved cloud disaster recovery from days to 30 minutes. And again, most of our customers are able to deploy their apps faster, which is about 75% faster, and they're also able to innovate and add features, thereby achieving a, a lot of help from a maintenance and support perspective, and they're able to save 10x. Here are some real quotes from uh, our customers. Cornell University, they say, in my experience, Docker can improve the state of many applications, including legacy and vendor solutions. Another fun fact from ADP, your apps are a hybrid. It is an evolutionary process. Large monoliths will get carved up over time. The interesting stuff that changes a lot will get refactored first. I'm going to hand over to Brandon, who's going to take you all through how to modernize legacy applications and the steps to get there. And eventually, he's also going to talk about the journey to containerize as a service. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, Steve. 
So as you mentioned, you know, in walking through why you might consider modernizing your legacy applications with Docker, um, I really want to talk through the process. So how you actually approach this step by step. So we'll walk through a high level framework that we've actually developed with customers in the field, trying to solve these exact same challenges. Um, as you heard from that quote from Dee just a moment ago, right, this is not a new challenge that customers or, or enterprises are really trying to overcome. Um, so this framework is based on that real life experience that brings you from your current app state, your legacy app, all the way through to container as a service. Now, now these four steps really start with your application. Um, you know, like uh, you know, like uh, Dee was mentioning, you know, there's a lot of different apps you can consider, and there's all kinds of ways uh, or all kinds of reasons you might want to consider taking that existing application and pulling it into a Docker container. Now, some applications are certainly better candidates than others, and as a part of this framework, we'll at a very high level talk to you about, you know, how to select the appropriate applications to start with first. Um, you also want to leverage tooling in here. So there's a lot of applications. Most enterprises have hundreds, if not thousands, of applications uh, that are really good candidates to containerize. So we want to help with the operational process of driving those from, an, uh, you know, a bare metal or a virtual machine deployment into a container image. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about a tool called Image to Docker, which is going to help you bring your Windows-based workloads, your Linux-based workloads, quickly into a container uh, and a Docker image. Now, the next step, deploying and managing your workloads, right? At the end of the day, a container is a container. So managing your monolith can be just as straightforward as managing your single small microservice container. Um, but it really starts with, this is really where modernization kicks in. So without having to change any of your source code, without having to refactor your app in any way, you can achieve scale. You can more quickly update your application. You can much easier uh, or, or uh, you know, apply security uh, to the actual process, and we'll talk about the software supply chain in general and how you can apply a security of your existing application from end to end. And really, we could stop there, right? If we decide that this is an application that we don't need to do any additional refactoring on, we don't want to just make small updates to, it's certainly possible in some cases that we might want to just stop there. But in a lot of cases, we see customers that are looking to, as ADP mentioned, continue to refactor this application over time. So start with a monolithic application, and through an iterative approach, break down the components of that monolith into small microservices. And we'll talk through that process as well. And then the last but not least, as we're getting towards containers as a service, is to automate the entire software supply chain. So Docker Enterprise Edition really contains all the tools that you need to integrate with your existing build systems, to integrate with your existing infrastructure, to really drive down the amount of time and effort it takes to take that application from its source code all the way through production uh, deployment. So let's start with the first step, lifting and shift. So whether your application is a .NET application running on Windows, whether it's a Java or a LAMP stack application running on Linux, um, there's, a, there's a really good chance that your application is a great candidate for a container as it stands today. And we'll talk through, you know, what makes a good container or uh, what makes a good application for a container and, and, and which ones are a little bit more complex. But it really starts with the tool uh, called Image to Docker. We have an Image to Docker version for both Windows and both for Linux. And essentially the way that Image to Docker works is you take your existing application wherever it's deployed, whether it's on a virtual machine or a bare metal box, you point Image to Docker to it and it essentially outputs a Docker file. Now in terms of selecting the appropriate applications on the Windows side, we've generally found that you know, IS or ASP.NET two to three tier applications tend to be the best fit for those first applications. Now, of course, as customers get more comfortable with the process, um, they tend to expand out to more complex applications over time. But in terms of the applications that you really want to start with, are those IS or ASP.NET applications on the Windows side, anything from Windows Server 2003 all the way up to the latest Windows Server 2016 are really good candidates. Now, on the Linux side, um, same thing goes, you know, Java applications that are typically two to three tier applications on frameworks that are well suited for isolation are really good fits. Um, in addition to that, LAMP stack is a really good fit as well. And there's certainly other frameworks as well that are really similar in signature to LAMP stack applications that are certainly good fit. Um, now again, you know, with, with uh, you know, making applications as most successful as possible, you want to limit the number of dependencies in a lot of cases. So we found those most successful applications tend to have sort of somewhat limited dependencies uh, that make it much easier to containerize. Again, you know, starting with the easier applications first and slowly evolving over time. 
Let's talk, let's talk about step two. So once you actually have your application as a Docker image, you have it running within a container, it's time to actually deploy and manage that image. And again, right off the bat, you actually get a lot of benefit just taking your existing application and deploying it into the Docker Enterprise Edition. Uh, you get additional scale, so the ability to actually scale up that application from a single container all the way up to hundreds of containers or thousands of containers if you want. Um, that's all out of the box and included in Docker Data Center using Docker Universal Control Plane. Uh, you get far more efficiency. So you get efficiency in your deployment process. Uh, so how you actually take that application from its current state that developers are working on it all the way through production. We'll talk about that a little bit more in containers to service. Um, but you get that efficiency again right out of the box. It's all built into that software supply chain. Uh, and then you get, of course, more security, which is really important. Uh, if you're just applying, having to make a change to the way that your application is managed, you want to ensure that it's not only just as secure, it's in fact more secure than the way that it's currently being managed and deployed. Um, and security, you get, you know, things like uh, scanning. So as that image goes from one state to another, so from your uh, developer workstation to your image repository to production, you can ensure that that image is signed and unchanged over time. Um, you can ensure that when your uh, your image is pushed into the Docker Trusted Registry that is actually being scanned for vulnerabilities as well. And that's included in the solution as well. So you can, uh, you know, ensure that there's no uh, vulnerable code in, in your applications uh, as you're actually deploying them. Okay. And then step three. So actually breaking down. So again, you know, if you wanted to stop at step two and you decided, hey, I'm, I'm really happy with all the benefits that I'm getting out of my more efficient software supply chain with my existing applications, and I'm not really looking to break that down into microservices, that's totally fine, right? And we've seen a number of customers that are looking to do that. They just want to modernize the way that their applications are being managed and maintained along with their other containers, and that's, that's fantastic. Uh, for a lot of other customers, you know, like ADP, they want to continue to break down that application in an evolutionary process to add additional features as microservices rather than just adding new features back into the monolith. So as everyone knows, or in, in D explained this in the introduction as well, um, you know, a microservice is essentially just a discrete and independently maintainable block of functionality. And those blocks of functionality in the Docker ecosystem are really just Docker containers. They, you know, you contain all that functionality, that, that discrete functionality within Docker container. Uh, and of course, you know, it sounds great as you're thinking about, you know, an application from, from the ground up, right, a greenfield application. But, you know, the reality is, you know, a lot of existing applications just cannot be refactored in a way, uh, you know, that you want to start from, from zero all the way to microservices in one motion. It's far too difficult, it's far too time consuming, it's far too expensive uh, to take that approach. So what we're seeing instead, again, just like ADP, we're seeing customers take the iterative approach, you know, taking, uh, you know, that functionality and breaking it into services over time, starting with monolith and then, uh, you know, uh, introducing those additional services as you go. So what about your specific application? I mean, if you're looking at, at your apps and saying, okay, where do I start uh, with this process? Um, generally speaking, you want to start with what changes most frequently. So what in your application are your developers having to maintain and update? So those are really good candidates. Those could be things like APIs or UIs. Um, you know, also things that adds the most business value, right, which is, you know, pretty obvious, but it's something that's certainly worth stating. Um, anything that adds the most business value in your application is something that you want to focus on for microservices as well. Um, but the most important theme of all this is you're adding those microservices, test, test, test. So introducing that testing framework, that automated testing uh, uh, process is certainly going to ensure that you have quality as you're, you're introducing those microservices into your applications here. Okay, and step four is actually powering the journey with containers of service. So really this is where we want to get, right? We're starting with the single application and we want to think through how we oper operationalize this entire process, starting from the left build all the way to shipping our application and then ultimately running our application in production. And we'll go through each one of these steps sort of piece by piece and talk through the major components and considerations around your latest application. So starting with the build process. So you're, we've been through, you know, how you actually build the application from, from your existing app and how you introduce those microservices into the application itself. Now you're going to be pulling those images from some registry, from ultimately from the Docker store. And really the critical piece here is that you can start with certified images. 
Do you start with certified base containers? So if you're, you know, for example, building an application on Windows, you want to start with a certified Windows base image that you can then pull, your developers can pull uh, from the Docker store and then utilize within their application. Now on to shipping. So as we ship that application from our developers or even our automated build system into the Docker Trusted Registry, we want to ensure that we're using Content Trust. So Content Trust is going to ensure that the image is appropriately signed and is consistent as we move from development into each other environment, so into production ultimately in this case. So these can be Linux or Windows-based images. They can all be centrally stored and managed within the Docker Trusted Registry. And then they can also be scanned for vulnerabilities. So I mentioned this earlier as being a really critical part as it, rely, or as it relates to security. Uh, we want to be sure that we're scanning those for vulnerability at each and every step of the development process. And we can introduce things like automated hooks to say that if this doesn't pass a certain uh, you know, scan and we do find a vulnerability that we can uh, intervene. So we can get a notification that, that wouldn't essentially go from the ship process to the run, wouldn't get into production, wouldn't get into staging. Uh, we would be notified to, to remedy the situation immediately. And then the last state here is run. So, you know, optimizing for costs and efficiency. We talked about the, you know, uh, you know, building efficiency into the entire process. We want to optimize also for our infrastructure. Now, the infrastructure can be on-premises infrastructure, so it can be infrastructure you already own and maintain. Uh, it can be bare metal or virtualized infrastructure, or it can be cloud infrastructure. Um, and we're seeing customers manage their monolithic applications, their legacy applications, alongside their ISP applications, alongside their microservice applications. Um, since we're managing this all within the containers of service platform, we can manage all of those, uh, all of those containers and applications essentially as peers. So how do we actually achieve all that container as a service goodness, right? I mean, it sounds kind of complex thinking, you know, I have my current application, I manage it in a really straightforward, simple deployment process. Uh, I want to move it all the way to container as a service. How do I get there? How do I really get started? Uh, well, the first thing is it's all included in Docker Enterprise Edition. So you get all of those components by, uh, by selecting Docker Enterprise Edition, uh, including, you know, the security, the scanning, the management, um, you know, it, it's all centrally included. Um, so major components like the, the engine, of course, um, you know, Docker Trusted Registry and the Universal Control Plane. Uh, another really key point here is that the infrastructure is certified. So starting with certified infrastructure, whether it's certified operating systems, certified hardware, or certified cloud vendors like Amazon or AWS, uh, we're ensuring that where we're starting the base infrastructure is going to work end to end. Um, and ultimately, if this whole process, having the uh, Docker, Enterprise and Docker Enterprise Edition uh, all contained as a single solution, is going to allow you to make modernizing your application much easier. So it's going to ultimately get you to containers as service faster. Now you're looking to try it yourself. So you know how do you actually get started? You you want to actually try you know starting your application, you know putting it into a container, um, trying to actually push it into Docker Trust and register and manage it using uh, Enterprise Edition. Um, you can actually start with Docker Enterprise Edition today. So you can actually go and get Docker Enterprise Edition as a trial on Azure or AWS, um, and you can actually get started thinking through this process for your existing applications. Um, in terms of tooling, that image to Docker tool that I mentioned is actually uh, free and available. So you can go and grab image to Docker. Uh, you can pull it down into your environment, whether it's Linux or Windows, and you can point it to your application and you can get started containerizing your application today. Okay. We're going to check if there are a couple questions. Okay, there's a question here. What does it mean about certified infrastructure? Can you elaborate? Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, and, and we'll follow up after the webinar here for uh, some additional questions in detail. Um, but just to get started um, on certified infrastructure, um, certified infrastructure starts with operating systems. So, you know, infrastructure like, uh, like you know, Red Hat, uh, Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux or on the Linux side or, or Windows. So we work with a number of um, operating system vendors to ensure that we have certified infrastructure. 
uh, on the, the plug-in side, so working with partners like Cisco to ensure that we have, um, you know, certified infrastructure on the networking side as well. Um, again, we'll, we'll provide additional detail on exactly what that means in a follow-up. Let's give it a few more minutes to see if there are more questions. All right. So I don't see any more questions. Um, so what we're going to do is we will send out the presentation, and then we're going to also follow up this webinar with a uh, blog post, and then we'll have a link uh, to the recording, and then we'll also have a link to the uh, presentation. And uh, I guess that's about it. So thanks, everyone, for joining us today on this webinar. Once again, the topic was how to modernize legacy applications using Docker Enterprise Edition. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye.